Hi everyone, I'm Ario, the designer of Dino Dodge, the second published game out of Blue Gear Games. Although you can't see me, you will be hearing my voice throughout this video as I explain the rules. Now, this is meant to be a rules replacement video. If you hate reading rules, then this video is for you. If you read the rules or a question popped up during gameplay, then navigate the video to the part you are looking for. Each section is named with a timestamped link, so you can simply tap the section you want to know more about. Maybe you're curious about the game or mechanics and want to know more. However, this video does not include setup. To watch setup, click the link in the description to quickly get that information. Now, without further ado, let's learn Dino Dodge. Okay, so now we're st this is a, a new game in Dino Dodge. So I'm the first player, so on my turn first I check to see if I don't have any cards, I have full hand, so I won't be drawing a new hand, and I have to add a meteor. If, uh, if you just started the game from setup, you'll skip this phase and go straight into action phase. But on the start of everyone's turn, you'll add a meteor. And I'm going to go ahead and add it right here. So now that I've added the meteor, I have to play at least one card, but I can play as many cards as I want. There's four different types of cards. Um, there's move you. Playing move you allows you to move your character one space to the left or to the right of your current location. Um, the next card type is um, Move Enemy. Move Enemy is just like Move You, except you can pick up an enemy and move them one space to the left or to the right, and you can pick up any enemy you want here. Move Enemy and Bump. Um, a bump is a keyword that you, pick, you take the action Move Enemy, but then it allows you to bump any other players that are on that tile. You bump all the players that are on that tile, but chain bumps do not happen. And then the last card is Move, You, and Bump. Move, You, and Bump works the same way, except instead of picking up an enemy and bumping, you move yourself and bump, right? Um, they, they, they work the same way. So those are the four different uh, card, card types. Uh, now what you can do is you'll notice that on each card type, top card, there's a little icon. So you can play this icon here uh, if you're on a tile that has the matching icon with a single card. So I am in this scenario. So I could play this card and instead of doing move enemy, I would not do that, I would only do this, and this is swap meteors. So this power allows me to play this card since I'm on that tile, play one card, to swap any two meteors that are on the board. So I could technically take these two and swap their positions. So it's actually pretty strong. I can swap any of them if the meteor was over there. It doesn't matter the meteor's location on the board as long as there's two meteors. So that's one. The next one is rotate axis. So if I was Ruby over here and um, this was down on this tile, I could actually play this card to rotate the axis back up. Axis, you cannot speed up a meteor, you can only keep it back up. And then the next one is land shift. So if you're on a land shift, you can shift any two adjacent tiles. Now, it does not have to be the tile that you are on. So if I was on, my dinosaur was over here on land shift and I played this card, I could go ahead and swap these two tiles. And the cool thing about land shift is any dinos stay there. The auras do not move in a land shift, and the meteors do not move. Only the pawns that are on the tile move. Again, it doesn't have to be this one that moved it. I can pick any two adjacent tiles and swap their position. Um, and then the last thing is move meteor. So playing move meteor, if I'm on there, I'm on that tile, I got that icon. Move meteor out actually allows you to move a meteor one position to the left or to the right, just like move uh, move cards. Meteors bump. So if I moved it this way, it would bump the meteor in that direction, and meteors also chain bump. There's a third meteor here, that meteor would have also moved over. Um, but you can pick the direction that you want to move a meteor left or right. However, let's say I was not on that that icon, but I really wanted to move a meteor to get this this meteor above red. I could actually play two cards. It doesn't matter their color, but as long as they have the matching icon for the power I want to use. If I do that, I can combine them together to use Move Meteor and still do that power even though I'm not on that tile. 
This works for any of the land effects as long as you have two matching icons. You do not get to use the value on the card. You, com you combine them together to use their power. But whichever one you use is the power you must use. All right. And then the last action that you can take um, with your cards is your dino power. So your dino power is a unique movement that you use by combining any two color cards or same text cards in order to use your unique dino's power. So mine is Bruno. So mine allows me to move uh, two spaces and then all enemies within one, so I'll go here, within one, Ruby's within one, and then so is George's within one, and range is on both sides of your dinosaur. So keep that in mind. Then all enemies within one move one in the same direction. So I'll move there, this'll bump Ruby over here, and this'll bump George over here. Using my dino power is really strong. You can see that the digits occupy each one of the icons here and then translate accordingly. After using my dino power, I get to draw a card from the action deck as long as I do not have five cards already in my hand, which I don't, so I will do that. When playing with the primal powers add-on, this adds power tokens to the game. Power tokens are specific to dino power. They can only be used with your dino power, and they're used to modify the, a stat on your roll card. The only modification is an addition. You cannot subtract. In this case, I'll be using Bruno, and I'll be using one dino power in order to add one to my hit stat. That means Bruno will move one, two spaces. All players within one range. Typically, he'll move one, but in this case, we'll move two spaces because I've added one power token to my hit stat to increase it to two. After you use your power token, you, are, you discard it away. However, through using dino powers, you generate a power token. So in this case, I would get one back through using that action. Power tokens are accumulated through using dino powers. However, they're not required to be used whenever you use your dino power. This means they can be accumulated. You can save them and stack them up and spread them across any stats the way you see fit. Pterodactyl. So the pterodactyl is a free action that you can use by rolling the dice. So um, the pterodactyl allows you to pick up anybody or, uh, along the way and drop them off where they were. So let's go ahead and say that, uh, let's put the pterodactyl over here with me. And let's say I want to use the pterodactyl to get out. So I'll roll the dice and I'll get a two. So what I can do is, is I can go ahead and move the pterodactyl two spaces and I could either pick up myself and move myself here like this, one, two, in order to have the pterodactyl move me. Now, alternatively, I could have the pterodactyl go fly over here, not pick me up, pick up Ruby and move him over here. So the pterodactyl works both ways. It could pick up yourself or it could pick up enemies and as long as they're passing along the way or on the tile of their location and drop them off at their end point. Um, the other thing with the pterodactyl is you can actually choose not to pick anybody up. So it's a harm, harmless action. You could roll two and just go ahead and move the pterodactyl here and no harm, no foul. Now, let's say that I roll the dino eye. Oops. Now, if I roll the dino eye, that is a unique ability where the pterodactyl comes and picks you up wherever you are and takes them back to where you are. This could be really good in tight scenarios that you need to traverse the board but don't have the cards to use it. And that is the pterodactyl. The other thing that you can do on your turn is control the dino egg. So the dino egg is a unique um, uh, pawn that if possessed during the sky is falling phase, you can draw cards from your discard pile. But the cool thing about the dino egg is, let's say I play a card to move into it, I can pick it up and run only during my active turn. So if I go ahead and move again, because I want to get out from under the meteor, I can go here and the egg stays with me. So it's something that you can take and run with it. Now, let's say that's all I wanted to do on my turn. I've used the, the pterodactyl, I've, moved, I've used my dino power, I've played some stuff, I've got the egg. At the, when I believe my turn is done, if I don't have any cards in my hand, 
I could choose to draw one card from the, the, the card pile, uh, assuming I'm going to end my turn. I have four cards, so that doesn't happen. So I'll go ahead and indicate that I'm ending my turn by flipping the first player token over to the meteor side, indicating the start of the sky is falling phase. Okay, so now is the start of the sky is falling phase. This phase is started indicated by being on this side. That is how you know we are all entering this phase. So we just did the first player's turn and the first thing that we'll do at the start of the sky is falling phase is get this event deck out and we will flip over the first card of the deck and put that card just right over it so we can see what it is. And this one says Meteor Shower. So event cards are very simple. You flip the card over and you do what the card says. They cause chaos. It says add a meteor adjacent left, then another right of the active player. So since I add this token, I'm considered the active player. So what we'll do is we'll actually take another meteor and add it adjacent left, and then we have to add one adjacent right of me. But since there's already one there, we don't do anything. The last thing is the black text below the event. It says, if meteors already exist, then do nothing. So that's why we know right here not to do anything. It's important to read that black text because sometimes uh, the event may say to do something that you actually wouldn't do because of a certain scenario. So we flipped over the event. Now what we're gonna do is rotate all active meteors down one on their axis. So we'll go, it doesn't matter which one you rotate down first, Everybody can participate in this to help keep things moving, and we rotate them all down. So we're still in this phase now, and the next thing we need to check is the draw phase. The draw phase is very simple and straightforward. Anybody who is underneath a meteor will go ahead and draw a card from the deck as long as they're not at five cards. This is called playing chicken with the meteor. So if somebody moves you under the meteor, you do get rewarded during this phase to draw a card if you're not at five. Um, or if you put yourself under in order to milk some cards, for example. Nobody's underneath the meteor, so they won't draw from the action deck. However, I am with the egg. So this is the benefit of the egg. If you're with the egg, you can actually pick up a card from your discard pile as long as you're not at, um, at five cards. So I'm at four cards here, um, and I'm going to go ahead and pick up this card because I have the egg and add it to my hand. So I went ahead and did that. We did everything in the sky is falling phase. And the last thing to do in the sky is falling phase is check for any booming meteors. If no meteors are booming, then you can go ahead and start uh, repeat the pass the player token to the left and restart the restart a new um, a new round. However, if any meteors are booming, then we enter the boom phase, which is happening right now. Okay, cool. So now we've en entered the boom phase. When the boom phase happens when there's any meteors booming. So first thing we do is check if any dinos are underneath, and there are. Dinos must escape or be eliminated from the meteor to get out or be eliminated from the game. So the way that you can get out is by playing a single action. Single action is either one card or a combination of any two cards from your hand. Combination meaning two matching uh, icons or your dino power. That single action must get you out to survive. And since there's two dinos, we start with whoever is the active player and then going left uh, clockwise in rotation from them. So since I'm under and I was the active player, I'm gonna have to get out first. So I'm gonna go ahead and play um, move myself um, and I'm just gonna play one card to get out. So I've resolved, George doesn't play and now we're gonna go to Ruby. Ruby's card doesn't help her. She doesn't have the car to get out. Um, moving enemy doesn't help her. And um, land shift, she can't use. So Ruby, since she doesn't have any way to get out from under this, so she's immediately eliminated from the game. So since Ruby's now eliminated, we put her to the side and we check to see if anybody else is under the booming meteor. Nobody is. Now what's happened is called impact. Impact booming meteors land on the uh, hit hit the earth and they flip over the land tile turning it into hot lava if the tile was already on its lava side then do not flip it okay the other type of scenario in a boom phase is when you're on a uh, a tile that's booming and lava this is called a deadly impact and it requires more cards for survival so the only way to survive a deadly impact 
is by either playing two matching icons together to successfully save yourself. And in this case, I could move the meteor this way to get it out and I would save myself. The other way to get out of a deadly impact, if you don't have two matching icons, is to use your dino power. So you can use your dino power to get out by going this way and then continuing the dino power. However, if you do not have uh, either two matching icons or your dino power, you can't get out and you're eliminated from the game. So, we talked about how lava is dangerous under a boom, uh, when you're on a boom by having to use two matching icons or your dino power in order to get out. However, there's another scenario where lava is dangerous. During your active player turn, when you possess the token, you cannot end your turn on lava. You must get out. So for example, Bruno, I would have to play a card to get out of lava. If I did not have this card and I was on lava, I would be eliminated from the game. However, I could still play this card before I'm eliminated, Con you know, contradictory to how we would play if we were under a booming meteor. So I can go ahead and play this card to put um, Stegosaurus in lava and put myself here. However, Stegosaurus is okay because it's not his active player phase. Me, on the other hand, I don't have any cards, I can't get out, so I'm eliminated from the game, and then my turn ends. If somebody dies during lava, we actually skip the active player phase and the boom phase and pass the player token over here. It's important to know that these phases are skipped because you won't rotate the meteors, you won't card draw, and another meteor will come out pressuring the, the world for another big impact. Next, when meteors impact, if the token below it has not already been flipped, it flips as well. And the token will do one of two things. In this case, the token adds the Velociraptor to the game. So we'll go over here and take the Velociraptor token and go and add it immediately to this land tile. You can remove this token from the game if it is a white uh, on its side. Now what we do is we would take this meteor out of the game um, and then put it in the meteor discard pile right next to the meteors. There are several different types of tokens and they all have a unique interaction. Remember, tokens flip over when meteors impact them. This one is Oil Slick. Oil Slick is a unique mechanic that actually stays underneath the land tile and will stay there throughout the game. Oil Slick means whenever you pass through or exit this tile, you'll add onto your movement. So if I play a move card to get out of Oil Slick and move one space, I actually have to roll the die and see how many extra spots I move. Oil Slick then goes ahead and moves me one extra space to the left. If I roll the eye on Oil Slick, I actually go Zen mode and don't move at all. Careful not to roll a three and roll back into another meteor. Dino Poop is a continuous aura token. This means that players passing through or exiting this tile must discard an action card of their choice from their hand and draw a new card from the action deck. Toxic Mushroom, whenever you play a move U card, it's actually inverted. So playing a move U card would actually do move enemy. So if I played this card while on this tile, it would do this, bump me over here. Okay. Volcano. So Volcano is white, which means it's a one-time event. They happen immediately when you flip the token over. Volcano erupts on this tile and turns both adjacent tiles into lava. If the tile is already lava, then do not flip it. Notice that this tile got flipped and the token was not flipped. Turning tiles into lava does not flip the aura token. Only land impacting meteors flip the token. Keep that in mind throughout different mechanics in the game. The magnet. This magnet is really awesome. What this one is, that it's gonna stay above this tile, below this tile, and whenever you add a meteor to the game, instead of starting on its highest axis, it'll start on its lowest axis. This is really great for speeding up meteors and creating deadly impacts under players. The other cool thing is that if there was another meteor next to this tile and it got moved over here, it actually rotates down to its one.
So whenever meteors are either placed or moved to this tile, they're affected by the magnet. The next one is landslide. A landslide is another one-time effect tile. Landslide is really cool because it'll take all players in the game and immediately move them to this tile. These tokens you can take out of the game as well, but landslide is a cool effect that will suck all players into one location. Make sure you're not on the bad side of this token. All right, and then the last token is tar pit. Tar pit is really cool and sticky. The only way to get out of tar pit is to use your dino power. Using your dino power will then get you out of tar pit. The cool thing about uh, um, tar pit is that if an enemy was in tar pit, playing a move enemy on your turn does not get them out of the tar pit. The only way to get them out is for you to dino power them out yourselves through the ramifications of your dino power or for them to use their dino power themselves. Only, dino, only players who use their dino power or are impacted by another player's dino power could successfully be removed from the tar pit. The other thing to note is that players get that, that this power happens on anybody passing through. You can use the pterodactyl to actually avoid the aura tokens below. So notice that I did not have to use my dino power in this scenario because the pterodactyl actually flies you above the auras. You are not affected by passing through or exiting them. Keep this in mind when you're in a sticky situation. And then the last one, like we saw, Velociraptor. Take the Velociraptor Meeple and place it on this tile to enter it into play immediately. The Velociraptor is a unique Meeple similar to the Pterodactyl, which is a free action on your turn. Only during your active player phase can you roll the, the Velociraptor upon choosing to do so and move the, Pterodact or move the Velociraptor that many spaces. Anybody who is on the tile that the Velociraptor moves to immediately loses one action card from their hand and has to discard it. If you roll the eye on the Velociraptor, she comes for you and you lose a card, dishing it into your, your discard pile. All players who are on the tile that the Velociraptor is moved to will lose cards. Moving to the tile with the, of, of the tile of the Velociraptor does not make you move cards, lose cards. The Pterodactyl cannot pick up the Velociraptor. So the cool thing to note about the egg is when the egg is impacted on, on, on a land tile, af during the impact, after it's turned to lava and the aura token is flipped, the egg actually flies over to the uh, land tile adjacent from it, or directly across the map from it. As the game progresses, more and more tiles will become dangerous, either with lava or with falling meteors. Once there's one tile that has neither of these, go ahead and place the safe tile token above it to indicate that this is the safe tile for the game. What this means is no threat can go above this tile that does not turn another tile into the safe tile. So for example, if I wanted to move this meteor over here, that would be fine because it's not lava and we would move the safe tile token to over here. However, I could not go ahead and add a meteor above this safe tile because it's there. So that it would create all threats. So I would have to put it above another tile if I wanted to do that action.